Hi guys, Rap Critic here, and this was a Kofi request. And if you'd like to request a song, movie, or music stream, it's only a one-time donation to the link you see here, available in the description. So let's get into today's song, requested by someone named Todd in the Shadows? Wait, what, that name, why is it Todd in the... T-I-T... -T oh, very funny, guys. Okay, who's the comedian with the joke name? What, was Nick under the stairs already taken? But, okay, l let's get into today's request for the 1991 kinda hit song, Pump It Nice and Hard by Icy Blue. Now, for the generously estimated 99% of you who heard this clip and thought, hey, I don't know who this is, but that beat sounds awfully familiar. Yeah, it's exactly what you think it is. Now, just to put this out there, sure, rappers sample the same beats sometimes. I mean, for God's sakes, how long of a playlist could you make just from the songs that sampled Atomic Dog? But listen to the original song salt and Pepper was sampling. You can hear how clever it is the way they switch the beat work from the original to make a new sound from it. So this isn't like a, oh, we happened to sample the same popular song everyone knew from their childhood. No, this is ripping the specific way salt and pepper remixed that beat and giving the song an obviously similar name and background ad-libs. Like, come on, son. This is all but literally re-releasing a smash hit record with a white face on it to try to rake in more dollars. Honestly, my video title might be a bit too harsh. At least Iggy Azalea never tried to remake Super Bass. Over here looking like Julia Roberts if she did a rap single for the Pretty Woman soundtrack. Like, come on, son, get the shit out of my face. Even her rap name sounds like she was being primed as basically the female Vanilla Ice. Like, Icy Blue? Come on, her record label's A&R team could have done better than that. All that said, though, removed from that context of being an obvious ripoff, does the song at least have enough charm to hold up on its own? Can the white girl get a chance to represent for all the white girls in scrunchies and leg warmers or, or whatever 80s trend hadn't died just yet by 1991? I mean, songs that are based on a gimmick can still be enjoyable or have their own merits to them, can't they? Well, let's take it from the top and see. Come on, sit over here, let me tell you a little bedtime story. <laughs> what in the fuck was that? I'm sorry, it's just, what is up with homeboy's voice? Come on, sit over here, let me tell you a little bedtime story. Like, is that supposed to be sexy? He sounds more like a drugged up Sesame Street character. Come on, sit over here, let me tell you a little bedtime story. But okay, once we get past that, we, we get into the song proper. Rhyming, dancing with glances. Like, really? You couldn't even wait to like the third or fourth line till you got to the half ass rhymes? Just kick down the gate with a, yep, this is the level of quality control we're dealing with, folks. Like, uh, uh, alright then. But okay, as you listen to the verse, it's actually a bit of a story track about Icy Blue trying to find someone she can dance with. AKA metaphor for sex. AKA, you know, the metaphor she ripped off from the original song. A guy looking flat said his name was Todd. He claimed to be a dancer. But unfortunately, these cool guys who talk a big game just can't seem to measure up to her appetite for f uh, dancing. Put out on the floor, his results were poor, so you see, I had to take charge. I said, listen up, Jake, get the going out your back and pump it, pump it nice and hard. Truth be known, that tone was good, but I wanted better. A guy who could pump it all night long in any kind of weather. Then she comes across a nerdy looking dude who asked for a dance, and she decides, eh, I'll give him a shot. We started to dance, and to my surprise, this guy had pumping power. And what do you know, the dude's so good at it, he's got her winded. So it's like, oh, this girl who is too much for all these cool guys comes across a dorky dude who outpaces even her. So the lesson for today is, hey, the cool guys may seem like they're going to satisfy you, but sometimes it's the nerdy dudes who maybe been uh, taking more time to study the dance moves, if you know what I mean. Ladies. Okay, editor guy, c cut out the part where I tried to put on the glasses back on one-handed. That, that didn't look as cool as I wanted it to look. But okay, overall, it's not a bad concept. Uh, honestly, I, I give it like a two and a half out of five. It's serviceable enough as an inoffensive dance jam, but, you know, unfortunately, the listenability is kind of tarnished by the fact that it's 
constantly reminding me of an infinitely better song I'd rather be listening to. And unfortunately for her, the song's release probably suffered from some pretty bad timing. Like, maybe if this was right when Vanilla Ice broke through, she could have piggybacked on the success, but by mid-91, we were a little over a year into Vanilla Ice's reputation being ripped apart by critics from every angle. So while guys like Third Base and Beastie Boys essentially weathered it out because they either had a pre-established reputation or a sense of authenticity that endeared them to the rap audience, a white chick starting out by trying to glide into the game by remaking a black female rap group's hit song, yeah, that shit was not gonna thrive. Like, listening back through it, I can't even hate it that much, but man, it was a poor misstep to come out of the gate ripping off such an unmitigated classic. Keep in mind, salt and pepper released the song in 1987, less than four years prior, and at this point, they were still in the mainstream making hits. Songs like What a Man and Shoop hadn't even come out yet, so trying to repackage a song from basically the current reigning legacy female rap group was gonna get you side-eyed in the rap game. Seriously, just imagine a rapper in 91 trying to snag a hit by sampling the same beat as You Can't Touch This and not getting tossed out of the game as the gimmick chaser they were. But hey, the shit clearly didn't work in this case, so they're soulless in that at least. In fact, this song isn't even the highest charting song she had. It was actually her second song. Oh man, this, this is just pure tea bad. Jeez, you know, maybe I take it back about ripping Salt and Pepper off. At least that first song was ripping off a cool song, so it had the residual coolness to carry it. This is just laughably incompetent, as she gets stuck in rap love songwriting 101 traps, like cycling through the very few workable words that rhyme with girl. And despite how much higher this single actually charted, it still wasn't enough for the label to feel justified in promoting her any further, so they scrapped any future plans, essentially relegating her to a footnote in the lasting success of salt and Pepper's discography, and to the back of even the most 90-est of 90s babies' forgotten memories. Hell, I don't even know how someone remembered this song long enough to request it. This is the kind of song you only remember if, like, you specifically had a show about one-hit wonders, and you wanted to cover this song, but you realized she technically had two songs that charted, so it wouldn't count, but you still wanted someone else to cover it because of what a silly piece of 90s cheese it is. But hey, look at the bright side. Back then, hip hop culture may have been a little gatekeepy with who was allowed to flourish in the scene uh, based on America's history of racism that whitewashed genres like rock and ska. But these days, casual white rap fans can freely pump their favorite subpar hip hop music to the forefront and finally enjoy their watered down mediocrity in peace. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe and the bell because that's what helps the most. Follow me on Twitch to check out my music and gaming streams, follow my social media pages to know when those streams are happening, and of course support me on Patreon to join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. So check all that fun stuff out and I'll catch you next time. Peace.